right. All right, we'll get started then. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to go through the medical errors um, ones uh, because the last one we did was Breaking Bad News. Um, so it's very similar structure, but with a few important differences. And also just the, the, the sentiment is different. So for Breaking Bad News, we're just the messenger. We're relaying information. But for this, you know, we are, you know, we're, we're responsible for, for, for what's happened here. Uh, so, you know, we need to, you know, apologise. I've been writing down some sound bites, some phrases that are useful. And there's a lot of phrases here for medical errors that I think um, you'll find yourself using again and again. So it's good to have those um, ready, ready in your back pocket to utilise at, at any moment. So some of them, before we go into details, you know, about the about the management, so that's always a useful one. There is an important new development I need to make you aware of. Well, that's kind of a, gives you a little bit more information that something has happened here. And then, you know, finally leading up to the actual disclosing of the error. Unfortunately, you know, there's been a mistake and hasn't been managed. Or unfortunately, there's been a problem with, you know, the biopsy or the blood sample. Or unfortunately, I have a little bit of a problem. Um, so, you know, I, I would say, you know, for the biopsy cases and the um, the blood samples where, you, you know, they've been lost or misplaced or mislabeled, then for those ones, you know, it's a problem. You know, it's not necessarily a mistake as such. I would say it's a problem. Uh, but for all the other ones, they are, you know, clear mistakes. And, uh, you know, we're responsible for this mistake, of course. And we are also responsible for making it right. You can say that, you know, when you start talking about the strategy. Uh, when you're asking them to do something as a result of the mistake, for example, you're asking them to come back in, you know, if it's a child who's swallowed a foreign body, to come back into A&E, or you're asking for you to do the biopsy again or to come back in so that, you know, they can give some bloods. I'm sorry to have to ask you this, but it's just some sound bites that I found useful, you know, whilst I've been practicing these sessions. Another one, I think it's important I let you know that we, you know, we wouldn't be asking you this if we didn't think it was really important. The hospital takes these incidents uh, very seriously. You know, the 10 points um, that are in the slides, those 10 points are only for serious incidents, right? So they're not appropriate to, to be used for, for all of them. You know, if, if you've um, mislabeled the blood products and need to come back in to take the bloods, you know, that's not a serious incident. That's not, you know, a never event or, um, you know, significant event or a serious incident. They're all the same thing. You don't need to go through them and do a whole, like conduct a whole massive investigation with meetings and incident forms and stuff like that. Uh, for, for, for the small errors, you just talk about, you know, the reflection that you're going to do the personal reflection if it was your mistake and um and and perhaps you know uh get them in touch with pals uh, to give their feedback about their experience so i suppose we'll get into it so that's what we'll be covering today so medical error so there's the cones protocol check understanding or context opening shot narration emotions strategy and summary so very similar to spikes more or less the same um but uh, the opening shot here is, I think, it's important. There's a, a slightly different structure that I personally use that I find uh, a bit more appropriate than, um, you know, when you're breaking bad news. So there's some, a few slight adjustments, but we'll go through those. Um, so, you know, these missed allergies ones, you know, the mother, she's already aware that there's been an error, right? So we're not disclosing new news to them. So so the cones or the, you know, the, the spikes or protocols, they're not really appropriate in these instances here. But we'll still be using the 10 points because these are serious incidents. So we'll need to, you know, explain to them that the hospital takes these incidents seriously and all the steps you're going to do and the investigation you're going to carry out and all that kind of stuff. You need to go through that. But otherwise, you just need to go through, you know, the angry patient approach, which, you know, has a lot more emphasis on um, addressing emotions at an early stage, you know, making sure they get everything off their chest early on using, you know, things like the EVE protocol are used much early, much, much earlier because they've already been uh, made aware of the mistake and, uh, you know, they're coming in angry from the offset, right? So so that requires a bit of a different approach. And we'll go through that in the next session. The next session I plan to do is the angry patient and angry relative approach. Uh, I do put in all the information there in these slides, but that's not to say that you're going to include all of those. You will not have time to include all those. You'll find yourself going over... 10, 12 minutes if you try to include everything. In order to go, you know, to finish within the eight minutes, you need to be very selective over what you choose. You have everything there to choose from. Um, and, you know, the rest is just kind of common sense about what's most appropriate for that case.
Uh, so this is just a general, uh, so the general approach, context, check understanding, opening shot, uh, narrative approach, emotion, strategy, and summary. Um, so we're going to be, you know, really open and honest throughout the process, uh, starting from, you know, this consultation now or this phone call now, all the way leading up until the final kind of follow up appointment to explain our findings and um, explain any actions taken or changes made in protocols or guidelines. And so we're going to be open and honest about, you know, what we found out throughout from from now until then. Yeah. So this is just kind of a general thing. Um, there is somebody there's a Google on the Google Drive folder. There is a, a link to IPS protocols and it, it gives like a nice general breakdown of all the different IPS protocols, interpersonal skills protocols. And um, uh, yeah, this is, uh, you know, for the most part, it's taken from there and it's um, it's pretty good. It's a nice kind of general summary. So it's going to be uh, type two. Um, there is one or two where they are, they will you know ask questions before you are given an opportunity to introduce yourself. Um, so you know be prepared for those. So you'd need the grips type three kind of framework. Once you finish the framework, go straight into doing the identity checks and then ask them a nice open question. That should be fine. The easy mistake to make there is um, to forget to get flustered and then forget to uh, to ask the identity checks to ask them their name and stuff. Yeah, so the same as Breaking Bad News with regards to the setting, the same, you know, position, I understand that. Um, or, you know, for where they're not expecting a phone call. So I'm sorry to call you out the blue and I apologise, it's an awkward time. The reason why I'm calling uh, is because I've got some important information about your management that I need to discuss with you and then move on to checking the understanding. Before we go into the details, can I just check a few things? So we're on the same page. Can you take me through what's happened so far? Nice open question. So this is their opportunity to talk, right? So we've got all of our stuff out of the way, all the things we need to do, all the things we need to check off. And now we're just going to give them an open question. Can you take me through what's happened so far? They might give you, you know, just one opening sentence. They might give you three or four, you know, sentences. Uh, but, you know, we've given them the opportunity. It's a nice open question for whatever it is they want to say. And then from there, we can kind of hone in on um, the specific details that we're interested in. Um, so if if they haven't explained the management, you can ask about, you know, what we've been told so far. So what's happened so far and what we've been told, because they're two, di two, two different things, right, uh, about the management specifically, because that's the reason why we're asking them to come. Um, and then the specific question. So was it explained to you that the x-ray would be reviewed by a specialist at a later date? Was it explained to you that the ECG and the blood tests would be reviewed by one of the cardiologists at a later date. Was it explained to you the possible side effects um, of the antibiotics that you've been taking? Was it explained to you, um, you know, the reason why we wanted to do a biopsy or the reason why we did blood tests during the preoperative assessment? And then, uh, you know, any history, relevant history, according to the case, really, uh, I think good general question is how are you feeling now? By the way, this Obviously, it's always open to interpretation. You pick and choose what, you know, is valuable to you. You know, this is what works for me personally. I'm not suggesting that this is what's going to work for you as well. But I do find that with these three questions, um, not only for, for this one, but also for the breaking bad news, it might there might be some instances where you want to, you know, check how they're feeling now first before you um, ask these questions. But, you know, just because just that's also a nice open question as well. So you can, I think, start with the... Uh, you know the history first i think it's a bit more mindful for the patient you know if they've had a fracture or something and you, you want to see how they're doing i think that's a good opening question but yeah so you know was it explained specific question in the relevant history same as breaking bad news so uh, you know how are you doing have they got any symptoms in you at the moment any, any red flags as well just the red flags i don't think it's worth you know um, talking about differentials here and then uh maftosa so not not forgetting obviously the allergies where it's uh, relevant uh, but yeah, very, you know, relevant history. So just pick and choose the things that are important. You know, there might be some instances who's at home might be a good question to pick from here as well, which, you know, might be useful in terms of like arranging transportation and things like that. Um, so the opening shot, there is an important new development that I need to make you aware of regarding your management. So earlier, you know, in the purpose, we said I have an important information uh, to discuss with you about your management. Now, we're just little by little in layers there is an important new development so now i'm telling them that something's happened i'm not repeating the same thing i'm gradually kind of giving it to them in uh, you know in layers so there's an important new development that i need to make you aware of regarding your management or the management of you know your uh, joshua or whatever 
And then we can go into the narrative approach. As you know, you came into the hospital five days ago with you know, chest pain. So, and then we performed, um, you know, whatever investigations, what was it we told you and what was it we did for you? you know, did we offer you any treatment and, and what was that? Uh, or did we just, you know, discharge your home? And then the final step. So the x-ray was reviewed by a specialist. We did a CT scan and the specialist reviewed the initial x-ray. Cardiologist later reviewed the ECG and the blood tests, the troponin or, you know, contact with the laboratory. They've contacted you to let you know that these haven't been labelled properly. You have not labelled these properly, so you need to um, do them again and you need to collect another sample. So they've, you know, you received a call. It may be that you, uh, that you contacted them because usually you would have heard from them within a day or two, but because they didn't um, call you, you contacted the laboratory to find out what was going on, to get an update. So the final one, so the first one we said was, I have some important information regarding management. Then we said, there is an important new development that I need to make you aware of. And now we're saying, unfortunately, there has been a mistake in how you've been managed. But when I was talking about, you know, the differences that I've seen be between, you know, breaking the bad news and disclosing a medical error. This is one of the, the significant differences is in how the layered approach starting from the beginning. Unfortunately, there's been a mistake in how you've been managed or unfortunately, there's been a problem. Or unfortunately, I have a little bit of a problem where you mislabel the blood test. It's your own personal problem that you need to um, inform them about and you need their help. Uh, so suggestions for um, how to um, disclose the error. The radiologist and the consultant agree that the x-ray does show a small fracture, what we call a hairline fracture. So I'm sorry to say that George has sustained a fracture. Pause. This type of fracture can be difficult to identify for a &E, you know, for a general a &E doctor because they're small and often need a specialist like a radiologist or an orthopedic surgeon to spot them. So we need to make them aware of any harm or complications, right? So we're not just telling them about the error, what complications or harm has this error caused? And also what complications or harm does it have the potential to cause, especially with the, the foreign body? We're going to go through all the possible complications and explain that to them as well. That's part of the medical error disclosure as well so unfortunately because it wasn't picked up the first time George was sent home without a cast let them know that and, and be honest with them about the fact that this is not ideal management had we known that there was a fracture he wouldn't have been sent home without first stabilizing his arm in a cast so it is unfortunate that he's you know not not had it stabilized over the last couple of days and he's been moving his arm around uh, so we need to be open and yeah. honest about that, that that's not ideal we explain the error the harm that it's caused or the potential harm that is caused any any complications so for the missed hip hip fracture her mobility was much less than than, than was expected for somebody who's just, you know just got a bit of uh, weakness as a result of that we you know we did a ct scan and this unfortunately shows that your mother did sustain a fracture of the hip pause the x-ray specialist has since reviewed the initial x-ray and has identified that there was indeed a fracture on also on the initial x-ray as well. But unfortunately, this was missed. I'm sorry to say that this was a mistake and your mother sh should have been assessed for a possible surgery for a hip replacement to fix the fracture before being referred for physio. So we need to get in there before she starts identifying it. So we acknowledge that, that you know, that's you know, really unfortunate that she's, um, you know, was sent to physio before the fracture has been fixed. So these three are all very similar, aren't they? I mean, these all of these five involve misdiagnoses. So they're quite a similar framework. Uh, but these three in particular. So, so the radiologist has now found a foreign body. So, the, so we explained that the the X-ray was review, reviewed by a specialist, and the radiologist has has unfortunately found there is a foreign body uh, on the X-ray, uh, which you know I'm sorry to say that I'd missed when I reviewed the X-ray myself. You know, usually for foreign bodies. The management is dictated by the position, right? If it's below or above the diaphragm, battery, uh, you know, which can leak acid and cause problems if it's charged as well. So uh, regardless of its position, it needs to be removed with endoscopy. So so we need to explain to them that the, the potential complications here. This is, you know, we need to get this removed as early as possible. We're not just acknowledging the mistake. We're acknowledging that as a result of the mistake, there's been a delay in the management delay in getting this foreign body out and that could have caused harm but we are hopeful that you know if we get this removed as soon as possible there won't be any damage 
So it can perforate through the food pipe and cause damage to surrounding blood vessels and structures. And the lungs can cause repeated chest infections and an abscess. So we need to remove this as soon as possible. Why she can't come in today, she's working and stuff and provide solutions to those obstacles. And then missed MI, the cardiologist found that the, that the troponin came back positive, meaning that you did suffer a heart attack the first time you came to see us, not muscular or bony pains. Uh, but unfortunately, it was missed. Uh, this happened because, you know, unfortunately, you were wrongly sent home before the blood tests were checked. And because the ECG was incorrectly reported as normal, when there were, in fact, some abnormal changes found there. Finding some abnormal changes there, you know, and, and misdiagnosing them as having musculoskeletal uh, pain. So that's a big error, right? That would have prompted them to, you know, wait for the blood test results before sending them home. But obviously, they should have, you know, um, uh, not sent them home anyway, regardless, until the um, blood tests were, were done. This unfortunately means that you were given the wrong treatment and that the treatment for your heart attack was delayed until you came back the second time. So again, we're explaining the effects. Okay, and we're not running away from it because the patient will say, you need to get there, get it in there before they do, right? They'll be like, oh, does this mean that, you know, um, it's going to damage the, you know, the batteries? Does that mean it's going to burn the, the food pipe? Or something like that you know they're going to say that so you need to get in there as early as possible and acknowledge that and uh, disclose it to them so this is an ongoing heart attack and it took them you know three days to start giving him treatment for a heart attack to even give him some aspirin and some pain like some morphine so yeah it's that's a bad one that one isn't it so we need to be a bit more apologetic with that one and then uh the wrong chest x-rays so, yeah, that's a series of failures there. So we're going to be rolling out the red carpet for this patient and giving them all the 10 points. So when we received the radiology report for your initial chest X-ray, we were surprised to find that they had reported it as normal. It was then discovered that, unfortunately, your chest X-ray had been mixed up with another patient's chest X-ray. I'm sorry to say that you were incorrectly diagnosed and treated as having a chest infection when you did not have a chest infection, as your x-ray was in fact normal. Your initial symptoms were most likely due to a viral infection um, for which you would not have been given antibiotics. And unfortunately, the tummy cramps and vomiting you've been experiencing are most likely due to an allergic reaction. So, so we need to explain to him that, you know, these symptoms are a result of uh, sensitivity to amoxicillin, which is another mistake because you should never have been given amoxicillin. We should have checked that before. So that's our fault. We take responsibility. And then we've got these two. So usually the lab contacts us to give us the results. But because we haven't heard anything from them, we decided to contact them. When we contacted the lab, they informed us that unfortunately they had not received a biopsy. We then conducted a thorough search to try and find to find it, but we were not able to retrieve it and it's not been found. I'm sorry to say that your biopsy has been misplaced. Our department takes full responsibility for this and we are very disappointed with what's happened. All right, so we're not blaming, you know, um, the lab. This is our department's fault. And then the laboratory informed me that I did not label the blood form correctly for your blood tests, and so they couldn't process them. And as per hospital protocol, the bloods have been discarded by the lab and they've requested that the blood samples are taken again and labeled properly. It's my own individual mistake, and I'm really sorry. So I've read all of that out, right? And I do think scripts are, you know, dangerous. Um, so, you know, this is just a suggestion, right, for, you know, how I would perhaps articulate them, uh, you know, how I would disclose the error. But I think, you know, it is best to have uh, very small, like to summarise in just like flashcards with just, you know, one or two points uh for each section uh because you know if you're trying to remember a script then that's a recipe for disaster so i've put that in there but you know use with caution it's not there to be um you know to be memorized use your own style keep things simple so at this point you know if you haven't already apologized which you might have been doing you know as you've been explaining this so you know first and foremost i want to make it clear i'd like to apologize on behalf of me and the team you know for this mistake um, and also for any harm or problem or distress uh, arising as a result of this mistake as well. Or, you know, first and foremost, I would like to personally apologise for this mistake. And I'd also like to apologise for the harm or problem I've caused you as a result of, you know, my own individual mistake.
Um, I would avoid using terms like inconvenience because it's not an inconvenience. This is, you know, if, if you say inconvenience to a lady that a child's been prescribed amoxicillin and, and he's amoxicillin uh, allergic, then, you know, that's going to really aggravate her. Uh, she's going to be really annoyed by you calling it an inconvenience. The distress that I've caused you or that you've had to go through as a result of my own individual mistake or our mistake. Neve protocol. So I can see, you know, based on what, what you cues that you're getting from her, she's disappointed, she's upset, she might be worried as well with what's happened. And I can understand why you would be disappointed and upset. And we're very disappointed as well with what's happened. And I'm really sorry, you know, that you've had to, to be put through this, that we've caused this kind of problem for you. Just with the breaking bad news, you know, just if they cry, you need to, you know, pause things and stop and don't hit them with more news and information if they're, you know, emotional. So we need to be uh, on the lookout for that and, you know, offer them a tissue if appropriate. And then ask for permission to continue. And then the management... So I think this is a nice sound bite, right? We are responsible for this mistake and we will be responsible for making it right. That is your introduction to your management, what you're going to do. So what do I propose that we're going to do? You know, we're going to apply a cast and follow up in two weeks. We're going to get reviewed by the orthopedic surgeon for consideration for hip replacement. And then we're going to, you know, um, arrange for the physiotherapist, occupational therapist to come in and uh, review you before you're discharged, but only once we've stabilized the fracture, if it needs to stabilize it. And then we're going to repeat the x-ray for the foreign body. And you will do an endoscopy because it's um, a battery or you need to do um, a bronchoscopy. We're going to take a history, examine them as well. So we're going to assess them, reassess them uh, for any complications, uh, looking for, you know, signs of heart failure and stuff. Um, so we can say we're going to do those examinations and then we're going to admit them into the medical ward and uh, uh, do some investigations uh, and consider them for angioplasty and explain what angioplasty is. So there's quite a lot to fit in for that one. So document the reaction, document the, that you're allergic to amoxicillin in the notes, make it very clear at the top of the notes. So you'll be given a, a red wristband uh, for you know all future admissions. You know, redo the biopsy with ex, you know with a numbing agent or any other measures that you might do. You know might explain that we're going to make sure the most senior person you know does this and you might need to give them a conscious sedative. You know all that stuff we talked about with the endoscopy. Uh, you know to make them as comfortable as possible. So just redo the blood test. You know you need to be creative with um, finding solutions uh, to all the obstacles that he puts in front of you. So if he says that, you know, he's really far away, he won't be able to make it into the hospital. You might want to suggest um, going to his GP to get the blood test done. That we'll be in touch with the GP to explain to them what, what tests need to be done. You might want to first suggest that he comes in after work and you can stay over time. Or, you know, you need to show that you're prepared to um, adjust for him as opposed to the other way around. Um, so it's according to what's convenient for him. So you're not going to set a date for him and say, you know, you need to come now um, while he's at work just to give bloods, you know. So it needs to be at a time that's convenient for him and we need to be inconvenienced as a result of our own mistake, not him, even though he will be a little bit, but we'll minimise it anyway. There may be some where you need to negotiate a bit, where you need to get them to come back. So I, I'm really sorry to have to ask you this, but that's a nice soundbite as well, that one. I'm really sorry to have to ask you this, but would it be possible at all if we could repeat the biopsy? Or would it be possible if you come back um, and uh, so I can take some more blood from you? Or would it be possible if you bring your daughter in so we can, um, you know, remove this uh, battery as, as quick as we can? So I think it's important to let you know that I wouldn't be asking you this if we didn't think it was important. Another soundbite there. Yeah. So a lot of these soundbites I've underlined. I've made these up, right? So you won't find these anywhere else, any courses or anything. So... But I found, you know, whilst I've been practicing that these sound bites are good. Um, these ones are, you know, all uh, all the academies will teach you these ones, right? Uh, but on the other hand, they're not structured as nicely as they are here. Um, so four things to say, six things to do. A good introduction is to say these four things, right? And these are based on, if you read up on significant events or serious incidents, the, the protocols for those uh, in the NHS, uh, these are the kind of things that are, you know, um, recommended that you say to them. So that's where they, you know, they've come from. 
Uh, so the hospitals take these incidents seriously. So a lot of these are considered significant events, right, or never events. It's not just if it caused harm or the child was about to be given augmenting uh, through cannula and then the mother stopped them. That no harm was done, uh, but it had the potential to cause harm. It could have led to harm. Um, and so that's still treated as a never event or a serious incident, right? So you're going to do these all these steps for that. Uh, but, you know, if someone's got a delayed cannula, a blocked cannula or something, and, you know, it's been it's taken a while and there's been multiple attempts, that's not a, a significant event. If somebody, you know, if you've you know mislabeled the blood, it's not a significant event. You're just going to, uh, you know, explain to them that you're sorry and make it as convenient for them as possible and explain that you're willing to go around, you know, their schedule and explain that you're going to reflect on it as well. Um, you know, the personal reflection you're going to do, you're going to be more careful and vigilant next time you uh, do the blood tests um and then yeah lessons will be learned so bang those out at the beginning and then pick and choose from uh from these also pick and choose from these as well so um definitely lessons will be learned that's a staple one that's going to be an open in all of them and open and honest as well so here's how i, how I propose to do that so firstly I'll, I'll get you in touch with pals or the practice manager if you're in the gp surgery right pals if you're in the hospital where you can give them feedback about your experience it's good that you've talked to, to us about this, and I will document our discussion in the notes, but it's also important that your feedback goes directly to the right channels to make sure that things are enforced from a higher position, because that's where usually things get changed. We really value your feedback as this helps us to improve and prevent such incidents happening again. So some lots of sound bites there with pals. We really value your feedback because this helps us to improve and minimise the risk of these things happening again. You can give them feedback about your experience. It's important that your feedback goes directly to the right channels. She's already given her feedback in the consultation, right? But we want her to give it directly to the right channels um, because that's really when, when things usually happen, changes are made, you know, from a higher position. Incident reporting. So I'm going to document this incident by completing an incident reporting form to make sure everyone is made aware of the error, right? So we're going to document this in the notes. And it could be that you're going to arrange significant events analysis meeting or root cause analysis meetings another name for it rca to identify why the error happened so at the moment we don't know where things went wrong it could have been a mistake by an individual or individuals or it could have been a failure of the system itself that we have in place so we need to investigate and find out where the mistake is if it's appropriate uh, review and make changes to the guidelines as well protocols that we have in place to prevent this happening again involve the senior so I'm going to inform the consultant about what happened and they will come and have a chat with you shortly. Shortly is a nice term to use because, you know, you're not making any promises. You're not giving the dedicated time. Yeah, that will get you out of trouble if you say shortly, especially if you're like really busy with lots of different patients and stuff. Follow up appointment. Once we have finished the investigation and got to the bottom of this, we'll arrange a follow up appointment with you to explain our findings and make you aware of actions taken to prevent this happening again. And of course, we're going to be open and honest with you throughout the process. Right, so that's the general structure. So I'll just do a quick summary. These can be telephone and or video consultations, right? So, you know, if it's a telephone one, is this Mr. Johnson? Hi, this is Dr. Hashford calling from the, uh, you know, the a &E department in uh, Manchester Hospital. Is this an appropriate time to talk? And can you hear me clearly? Okay. Okay, so before we start, we could just run some identity checks. Could you confirm for me your full name? age or date of birth and your first line of address. Okay, thank you very much. I understand that, or I'm sorry to call you out of the blue. The reason why I'm calling you today is because I have some important information about your management. But before we go into details about the management, so we're on the same page, can you take me through what's happened so far? Uh, and then you can you know, fill in the gaps of um, the specific details that you want. Was it explained to you that, you know, the reasons why we're doing this biopsy, was it explained to you the reasons why we're doing this blood test during the pre-op assessment? Um, so get that information out there because that's going to be useful. And then how are you feeling now? Or take some relevant histories, allergies if it's relevant. That's one like not to forget. Um, might want to check some red flags like for the MI one, you know. And then there is an important new development I need to make you aware of. As you know, you came in with chest pain five days ago, an ECG and blood test called troponin was done. 
was explained to you that the ECG was normal. It was reported as normal. You came in for a second time and, and you were diagnosed with having a heart attack and you're being managed for that now. So an ECG in the perineum was done and that was reviewed at a later date by the cardiologist. So he's reviewed all those tests. And unfortunately, we found that there's been a mistake in the way that you've been managed. So we're going to explain the mistake uh, in layers uh, with pauses in between where appropriate. And then we're going to apologize, make sure we're going to apologize. We might be apologizing, you know, making small apologies throughout the explanation, but our clear big apologies coming after we've explained everything. So first and foremost, I want to apologize on behalf of the team for this mistake. And I'd also like to apologize to you for the harm that we've caused as a result of this mistake or for the distress that we've caused. So get that apology, make it very clear. I apologize. So I can see that you're very disappointed with what's happened. And I can understand why you'd be disappointed given what's happened. And I'm really sorry that we put you through this. You know, we're responsible, you know, I'm responsible for this mistake. And so I will be responsible for making it right for you. And then go into your management. What are you going to do? Redo the blood test or whatever it may be. Uh, negotiate if you need to negotiate, they put in some obstacles. Uh, we negotiate with the patient and then we explain, okay, the hospital take these incidents seriously. We'll be investigating this as a high priority to find out how and why this happened. We'll be open and honest throughout the process and lessons will be learned. And then in terms of what you're going to do, so for you know the, the misdiagnosis of pneumonia, we're going to do all of those things. So we're going to leave lots of time for that. For the mislabeled blood products, we might just suggest PALS. And that's it. Uh, there's a lot of debate about uh, whether to include PALS or not. Some people say, you know, you should offer PALS, you know, um, regardless of whether the patient's happy or not, you should offer it to them. And some people say, no, you should try to reach a point of negotiation with the patient and try to deal with it there and then in the consultation uh, in order to avoid, you know, complaints and things like that. We want to resolve the problem here. That's you know, why you're coming in here to try and disclose it, but also to resolve it with them and make sure they're happy. For the purpose of the exam, we should offer at least PALS for all of these, right? All of these scenarios, no matter how small the mistake is or how angry the patient is. So all the angry and medical errors are going to offer PALS. That's a standard. Then the rest are just plus minus, right? Incident report form. So incident report form, significant event, review of guidelines, they are only for things that are considered a significant event. Like avoid saying them if it's just an angry patient and stuff. Um, but that's the general medical errors uh, framework. Uh, pick and choose from those. So as a minimum, open and honest, lessons will be learned, pals. Yeah, some good sound bites. Definitely just, you know, just remember the cones, check understanding. Before we go into the details, so we're on the same page. Can you take me through what's happened so far? Opening shot. There is an important new development I need to make you aware of regarding your management. Narrative approach, as you know, final step. And unfortunately, it's the main uh, disclosure, there's been a mistake in the way you've been managed. And then explain the mistake. Fortunately, there's been a problem with the biopsy or the blood sample. Or explain the problem. And then emotions. First and foremost, I'd like to apologise on behalf of me and the team for this mistake. And I'd also like to apologise for the distress that we caused you as a result of our mistake or my in individual mistake. E-protocol, use it where, wherever, wherever is appropriate, wherever, whenever emotions are heightened. I can see that you know, you're very disappointed and upset. I can see why you would be very upset given what's happened and, and, and the problem we've put you through. And I'm really sorry that we've put you through this or we've caused you this problem. Yeah, so make it clear that you've apologised because you don't want them coming out of the conversation saying, did he say sorry? Did he say sorry? Let me think. Oh, I don't, I don't think he actually said sorry. That's what you want to avoid. You make it very clear. And then strategy. We're responsible for this mistake and we are responsible for making it right. So what I propose we do is treat whatever the treatment is and negotiation and then the 10 points. I mean, the breaking bad news is, is one of those where you, you, you can say, I'm sorry, but you're not taking any responsibility. You've got this condition, you've got cancer. It's not my fault you've got cancer, but I'm sorry for what you're going through. But here we are 
also medical errors taking responsibility for it as well and in some of the angry patient scenarios as well there are some instances where they're angry and it's unjustified right and there are some instances where they're angry and it is justified so we'll go through all those 